You're listening to the Witchy Wit Podcast, episode number one. We're talking about living authentic lives. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Witchy Wit Podcast, where we look at life through a witchy lens. I'm Kimberlyn. I'm Leilani. At Witchy Wit, we explore current events, ideas, music and books, and experiences in ways that recognize energy and life in everybody and everything. We are both real witches. And we bring two real perspectives through the lens of our different ages, races, and backgrounds. With a healthy skepticism for what we have been told is true, our conversations are raw, candid, and vulnerable. Join us as we cast a spell to uncover what we each know is true in our intuitive, witchy selves. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Witchy Wit Podcast. It's great to be in circle with each of you. I wanted to check in a little bit before we get started. Kimberlyn, what's going on with you outside the podcast? Um, oh, lots and lots of things. Had a great weekend. I spent a lot of time outdoors and, and just cleaning my house. <laughs> um, I normally make that a low priority. And so sometimes I'm just you know stepping around thinking, this house is disgusting. So I spent time just like scrubbing my shower and around the toilet and all that great stuff. That sounds really disgusting, but it made me very happy. Anyway, what about It's such you? an example of adulting right there. <laughs> Tell me something you're excited about, cleaning. I know, I know. It's like you can talk about reading and all this kind of right. stuff, but sometimes you just got to get down there and scrub That's that, right. you know, scrub the, around the toilet. Seat, I do so. feel like it's metaphorically mm-hmm. cleansing to physically cleanse. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's such, it's something for at least a few minutes you can look at it and say, done. Done. Right? Task you know? complete. Exactly. As teachers, yes. it's hard to see that, you know, 10 years from now, they'll come back and tell you you were great. But you don't really get a sense of that when you're doing that. So anyway, so that's what I did. Okay. What about you? So for me, what I'm thinking a lot about is that it is September. Mm-hmm. And September means it is the month before October. And October <laughs> means which stuff in stores. <laughs> well, you know, it's so, so amazing that you said that because that's not been something that I thought a lot about until about a couple of years ago when you gave me the witchy stickers. <laughs> and now I'm a little bit more aware and sensitive to that because people see it. I have someone my, on, on my computer and some on my date book. And I like that idea. So I'm going to get out there, you know, inspired by you and explore some of the witchy opportunities. I find that uh, a couple weeks into September is when they start rolling it out. Mm -hmm. So uh, a friend of mine informed me that there's already Christmas stuff out and I said, hold up, hold up. Give me time for Halloween. Halloween. Then we can move on to Christmas, but just like give me some Halloween time. Yeah. So I'm excited. I specifically look at uh, clothing Mm -hmm. because I like to find like shirts with cute witches on them and things like that. Yeah, cool, cool. Excellent. So I'm going to be looking and hopefully maybe we can do a little shopping. That'd be really fun. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. So So we're going to start out today talking about living um, authentic lives. And I read somewhere, I'm not sure where, so if anybody knows, please shoot me a message and let me know. But I remember reading once that um, to not look at what people say but look at how they say it. And to me, that really jumps us into this issue of authenticity in, in terms of who are people. Um, and, and I've been giving a lot of thought to this because we've been doing this, and I know you've been sending me tons of yes. <laughs> things that you've come, you've come across. But, one, but I, I, I know that people talk about, you know, we value authenticity. People want people, you know, people want other people to be authentic, and I assume they want to be authentic themselves. But what does that mean? I mean, have have you given that any any type of thought? Well, I I also think I think that people say that, but I'm not sure that they really mean that. Mm-hmm. I think what it's challenging mean? living authentically, and I think it's I think it can be challenging living around other people who are living authentically. So when you say that, when you say that people don't really want it, do you mean that? Uh, we we don't share the same I share the same um, definitions of what authenticity is or or what what do you mean by that I think well I, so when I think about authenticity I think about I think about being in a meeting and I don't know if this has ever happened to you and then somebody says 
no, no, like tell me the truth. I really want feedback on this. And then in my head, I'm thinking like, yeah, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so authenticity, there's honesty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honesty. And I would say honesty with others and honesty with yourself. And, and so when people talk about, you know, being authentic or they want feedback, Oh, golly, I'm trying to remember. There was this, mm, I have to send it to you. There is this uh, cartoon, and I can't remember who, who it is, but there's two guys talking, and, and one of them says when, they, when, when someone's asking for your opinion, what they really want is their opinion coming out of your mouth. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, so I think that, yeah, I think that that's what it is, is that um, when you ask for honesty and then someone tells you that, then it's actually forcing you to kind of look at yourself and, mm-hmm. and maybe kind of drop some illusions or something like that. Yeah, and I think it, I think one of the challenges is whenever I am living authentically, if I am doing that in someone else's presence, mm-hmm. I can rub up against them, and then that can make I think that can cause some uncomfortableness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If if you, if let's say this other person is not, mm-hmm. um, it can kind of be a mirror and reflect back at them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that's been true for me. Yeah. I felt that. Yeah. I, so I, I think w- what makes this challenging for me is that I spent so many, so many years living inauthentically, mm-hmm. and in a way, kind of priding myself on that. Not, not, not. I'm, I didn't say, okay, this morning I'm going to be inauthentic, but thinking <laughs> of it more as, well, I am making, I'm making this friend feel better. And I am helping this person by guiding them. I mean, looking back at it, I think I was horribly manipulative. You know, thinking that by being what this person needed, I was helping them. But probably I was just dodging looking at myself, right? (laughs) So I think you bring up a really great point that oftentimes uh, we can numb out from our authenticity Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in ways that look healthy that seem mm-hmm, mm-hmm, helpful mm-hmm. or that seem productive. Like like cleaning is one way that um, I know I do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, helping others, I'm like big air quotes around the word helping mm-hmm. uh, others, mm-hmm. being manipulative in ways that I don't think are manipulative, but I think are helpful, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. probably are manipulative. Yeah, and, and looking back, I had a lot of ego invested in I thought of I thought of it as being my Libra, you know, helping the situation to be smooth and comfortable and making sure everyone is happy and you know everyone's having a good time and all that kind of stuff and and in a way I think I might have just been keeping it maybe conflict free for myself. So by being what this person needs um that I I felt like I was giving my giving of myself, but I was really just keeping us from having maybe a healthy relationship where I had to own up and be myself and 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 um, be myself and kind of let the chips fall where they may like you know be myself and and recognize that somebody may not like that I think when you say that to me that sounds really true mm-hmm. authenticity choosing to be myself and let the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. That releasing of the way that others react or others think about me. Mm -hmm. And for me as an Enneagram 2, I think that that's a big struggle. I know, I'm like laughing at like, we're like Libra, Enneagram 2. I'm an Enneagram 3. I'm also an ENFJ. Are you really an Enneagram 3? Yeah, Uh, yeah, with the two wing, with the two wing. Oh, no wonder we get along so well. (laughs) So for those of you who know nothing about this, um, just as an aside, the Enneagram is just another way of um, helping to understand personality and um, actually it's decision making and um, and choices. Well, I guess that's the same thing. So um, Enneagram and explore. Yes, definitely. So I've been listening to a lot of Brene Brown, and one of the things that she constantly talks about is authenticity being a choice, and that one can actually choose not to be authentic. Um, and so I, I think that's I think that's fascinating that you you, you can actually choose that. Um, and so. I, I, I'm wondering if you would like to talk a little bit about how, like, some, um, instances in which you made these types of choices. So I think one thing about choosing to be authentic, mm-hmm. I thought that whenever I chose to be authentic, I thought that everyone would celebrate it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, naive. <laughs> 
like Captain Naive over here. I thought, I thought, I don't know, rainbows would pop out or there would be a parade or something. But what I noticed was when I made that choice, it, it could be quite jarring to myself and to the people around me. Mm-hmm. It could it could jar the people that that I think love me, but they loved the me that they could predict and the me that had behaved in a certain way. Mm-hmm. So when I would make a choice, it it created these ripples and um, and I think ultimately it is for the better, but I do think that at the beginning it it was shocking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I so what you're saying kind of reminds me of this idea of what our society kind of expects of us and, and really wants from us. And I would, I would suggest, I would, I, I, I'd throw out there the idea that uh, no one really wants us to be authentic. I mean, the society as a whole does not want us to be authentic. Society as a whole wants us to just toe the line and be normal and fit in and do everything that uh, helps society move smoothly on, you know, kind of maintaining the status quo. And when you're being um, authentic, you're being true to you and not necessarily to um, what you what you might have even been the day before or, or people's expectations um, uh, of you. And so it, it's jarring and it upsets the, the apple cart and, and it's scary. Um, it's really frightening for me sometimes when I can actually see myself making choices. Sometimes I, I make, I, I, no, we're constantly making choices. I'm constantly making choices. But sometimes when I'm actually aware that this is an opportunity for me to be authentic, and what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, am, mm-hmm. I going to, am I going to speak my truth and, and be thought of as strange or unusual or wacky or selfish? I mean, because people put a lot of different casts on that, right? Um, and and so for many years, I didn't make those choices because, um, or make authentic choices because I felt I was being selfish or I was told that I was being selfish. Um, so when we make these choices, we're actually really, you know, bucking the ap- apple cart. Is that the phrase? You know, knocking over the apple, overturning the apple cart. <laughs> so, and, and, and people, I, I would suggest that the people around us who are used to us being a certain way, make that, that makes them very uncomfortable if they don't actively hate it. I, I wonder about, I keep hearing us say over and over again that when we choose authenticity, a fear is that people view us as selfish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I, I wonder if that's ringing true to me because that is a huge fear of mine. I know whenever I left my ex-husband, mm-hmm. the feedback I got a lot was that I was being really selfish, mm-hmm, that I was putting mm-hmm. myself in front of whatever, like mm-hmm. fill in the blank, mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. family, my whatever, this, this the relationship, relationship mm-hmm. this other mm-hmm. thing, and that it was all about selfishness. And I was really clear by that mm-hmm. time, it took me a long time to get to that point, but I was clear by the time that I made that choice mm-hmm. that it was about authenticity, yeah. Yeah. it was about self-care, it was about me doing what is right for me. Mm-hmm. So I was really clear that it, I was looking at the situation and I, I kept thinking like, this is weird, they're calling me selfish. I'm really clear that this isn't mm, selfish, mm-hmm. but how do I was so used to external reality matching internal reality right, and that yeah. being validating. Mm-hmm. So perhaps part of authenticity is giving up that connection to seeking validation with an external reality and then therefore trusting only in what my internal compass says. Yes, yeah, yeah, your own intuition. Yes, our in- intuitive witchy selves. Oh, our intuitive witchy selves. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I, I agree. I, I've spent so many years creating this support network of people who will tell me what I need and want to hear, and and what I needed and wanted to hear was that everyone loved me and that I'm so helpful and I'm so this that and the other. And so when my goals changed, it. I, I, I'm asking more either of the people around me or I'm asking nothing of the people around me. And, and both of those are scary for someone who's kind of lived in that, that in the embrace of that network, you know. So um, that's been a really, really, really big change. Um, so one of the things um, that Brene Brown talks about is making choices to be authentic or inauthentic and, and the reasons behind it. like. Um, what are some of the healthy reasons um, for being inauthentic? Was that? <laughs> I think I think you had mentioned that at some point. 
Um, can you come up with some examples of I that? I can or? totally come up with okay. examples. Mm-hmm. I think that's actually a really important mm-hmm. thing to talk about, especially for our fellow witches, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, for anybody who bucks, or what did you say, turns over the apple oh, overturn, Overturns the apple There was a lot of yeah. spilled apples throughout <laughs> this episode, I <laughs> yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, for anybody who has overturned the apple mm-hmm. cart, mm-hmm. whether that be with their sexuality, with mm-hmm. their religion, with mm-hmm. what, mm-hmm. I mean, I can just think of a million things. Right. Uh, their gender identity. I think that sometimes we have to calculate, mm-hmm. uh, is this a risk that I want to take? Uh, and the authenticity is not necessarily for everyone a billboard, mm-hmm. but maybe it is uh, like a, a stone that we keep in our pocket that mm-hmm. we choose to pull out and mm-hmm. share with those who are who are trustworthy mm-hmm. um, and who who can offer me feedback and who can offer me support. Uh, mm-hmm. some, now, sometimes I'm sure it's good to just be who you are whenever you want to, mm-hmm. uh, but other times perhaps there is that sort of choice that Brene Brown was talking about mm-hmm. that maybe it's not good to show up. I mean, I know I was broom closeted mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for a long time mm-hmm. at my office. I still mm-hmm. kind of am. I mean, I have witchy <laughs> not stuff. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Don't, don't listen to our podcast. <laughs> uh, but I still I have like witchy stuff around my office, mm-hmm. like a uh, Halloween paraphernalia mm-hmm. that I keep up mm-hmm. all year long. Mm-hmm. But I don't walk around being like, what's up? Who wants to cast a circle with me? <laughs> Uh, but like I have trusted coworkers yeah, that yeah. know, mm-hmm. but I definitely choose to not show up in that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, it sounds like what you're describing are a lot of ex- um, reasons where you're choosing not to be, not to not to let your your freak flag fly. Mm. <laughs> um, I salute that freak flag <laughs> <laughs> because of because of external, you know, like your job or mm-hmm. people. Um, can you think of any? instances where you might have made that choice for something internal something that was just Leilani Hel- and, I'm, I'm, and, you, and the answer might be no but I'm wondering healthy reasons why mm-hmm. I think uh, shout out to shout out to Star Trek <laughs> prime prime directive mm. ah. you know like you can't disturb the culture of another yes. place mm-hmm. with your culture mm-hmm. like I have I have been I have loved many people mm-hmm. who I have watched this budding of authenticity occurring with them, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it can't be rushed. Yeah. And yeah. so, and I know that, that there have been times in my life where people have been like, uh, hello. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, give it like yeah, whatever, yeah, a yeah. week, a month, a year, five years, whatever, yeah. you know, and then I'm like, oh, they're right. Yeah, yeah. So, so I do think that there is that process. Now for me, sometimes I, that process can be astonishingly long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so it sounds like um, the the idea of uh, it, it's it's really important when you're dealing with someone who is not as I, this sounds so judgmental. Um, I was going to say not as evolved, but they're they're maybe not where you are on the path, and so to to um, give them their room to kind of do what they need to do, you you step back a little bit and don't maybe not shine as much. Is that kind of the idea? Maybe or? not push them. Like I know for mm-hmm. me. I'm thinking about when this has happened with mm-hmm. me. I've needed that space to ruminate, to germinate, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. whatever other eight word, mm-hmm. you know, like to <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. to allow that to grow within me, so yeah. that I, yeah. I could raise that awareness, so that I could mm-hmm. then blossom into yeah. that part of my authentic self. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just like thank the goddess for all the people who have been around me in that moment yeah. and like loved me through the that those growths. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of talked about some reasons why we may not show up as authentic or we might mm-hmm. choose not to, but let's let's dive into what it means to actually show up as your authentic self. Mm. Well, so there's a couple of things. First of all, I think it's easier for some people to show up as their authentic selves than others. Um, you know, there's, I, I, I think rebels, it's easier for rebels because they're used to to, to overturning the apple cart, they're used to kind of going against the trend. They're, you know, so, and that's, that's, um, I, oh, I can't remember, it's the, oh, what's her name? One of my uh, person, uh, personal self-help books, I can't remember, but there's like these four types of personalities and one of them is the rebel. And, um, and so for them, actually being different is a part of their, a part of what makes them get out of bed in the morning. Um, for me, you know, smoothing things over, <laughs> making everybody happy. Um, that's what, you know, that has been my kind of go-to 
li- lifestyle choice. And so it's harder for it's harder for me to to do this in an, in an, uh, um, in a context where people aren't aligned with my authentic self. So it's you know it's it's easy to do it when we're in circle mm-hmm. and we're, and with like minded witches and I can be my. I don't want to say I don't. I don't know if I'm going to say I, I can be myself, but I can definitely let that part of myself shine. But then when I'm at work or or you know in the HEB or something like that, it might be I, I I don't get the encouragement to do that, and and I might shut that down a little bit, and that's probably not healthy. But it also you know keeps me from getting mugged in the parking lot of the HEB. So sometimes you you make that choice. But um, let me give you a chance to talk. <laughs> Well, I, I think what you said about it's easier, like mm-hmm. in the rebels, mm-hmm. you know, there's, uh, I think whenever our authenticity happens to fall in alignment with what mm-hmm. our culture says is mm-hmm. appropriate, mm-hmm. Yeah. whether it be who you love mm-hmm. or how you dress or how you worship mm-hmm. or the color of your skin or like any, any myriad of those things, mm-hmm. I think that does make it easier maybe mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. show up mm-hmm. yeah. as authentic. Yeah. yeah. And, and. I also feel it's my responsibility to do it anyway. <laughs> you know, to, so when it's not, I mean, and, and this is the hard part for me. It might be easier for other people in, in different circumstances, but the hard part for me is to, um, after all these years, now that I've kind of figured out who I am, <laughs> let that person shine. And and um, so uh, again, another quote, and if people know who actually said this, please send it to me. Um, Someone says, uh, "Being authentic is, you know, speaking your truth, even if your voice shakes or you have to whisper mm-hmm. or you know that kind of thing." And so, um, I, in my baby steps in in doing that, I have to, um, I accept the fact that it's, you know, it's not going to necessarily be what everybody wants. It's not going. It's not going to necessarily be what. Um, um, how do I want to put this? Uh, what the culture is right now. Um, but I, I'm allowing myself to think that it might actually be what, it, what's needed. You know, just one little person, you know, singing their little voice, you know, flying their. With their <laughs> is it a freak flag that they're yeah, the teeny little, <laughs> the freak, little freak flag, flag yeah. going? Back exactly, back. and then that that encourages the next person until the culture is one in which everybody is being authentic, right? But somebody has to kind of get that started to open the gate. And I and I wonder. I don't like to speak in broad strokes, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. especially about being mm-hmm. a witch. Mm-hmm. I do wonder, though, if part of being a witch for many is that call to authenticity. Mm-hmm. I mean, we cannot. You can't be a witch mm-hmm. and not be okay with somehow going somewhat against the grain. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. by our choice to accept. I think mm-hmm. by my choice to accept that about me, mm-hmm. I'm committing to partially being okay with okay, well, like, I'm going to be different from yeah. a mm-hmm. lot of other people. Mm-hmm. And that manifests in, you know, people saying Merry Christmas in mm-hmm. the store. And I'm like, I'm like, I would like it if they said something else. But you know what? <laughs> Happy cultural Christmas to you, too. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then it also manifests in other maybe deeper ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, what did you just say? <laughs> I said that being a witch is oh, yeah, being a, a witch. call thank to you, authenticity. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I was like, I, I was going to say something. Um, but yeah, but for me, a lot of being a witch has been being countercultural, mm-hmm. right? Because, or counter 21st century cultural, right? Yes. Maybe, maybe harkening back to a, a different time. But a, but a part of, of what I do is chiseling away all of the stuff that I've put on, you know, I built over myself for the past 40 years and, 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 you know, going back to that little spark, um, the, the little girl who wanted to sit out in her, back in the hood in, New, in Newark, New Jersey, um, out and sit and, and play her drum out on the, on the front porch. Did right? you really? I did for a day. <laughs> Whoa. That's not fra- that's not yeah no 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 well so so here's the thing about okay and this is a side but you know when you when you're going to be different in New Jersey you got to you have to be tough okay in North New Jersey because you get your butt beat so so um so yeah so I I you know I I was kind of good with that for a bit and then I and then I allowed myself to maybe steer that in a different direction good choice bad choice whatever it was forty years ago. Um, you know, I would have been a different person. So, you know, you can't, you can't say if it was good or bad. But anyway, I said, but what I, I think a port, an important part of this is as um, a lot of the stuff that we do 
in, in, in ritual is about learning about ourselves. And a lot of the stuff that I do is really about um, just you know cutting stuff away. So um, as a witch, I feel as if a part of the gift I have for the world is just being myself, which might be different, might be the same or whatever, but just bringing that to the party. Do you remember that ritual we did, the no mud, no lotus ritual, where we put mud on our skins? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. So I'm thinking about that. That image, whenever you said, maybe our journey is just the chipping away. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I had this image of of how I feel so so much of the time, which is like, this is a, a compressed timeline. Mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I'm authentic. <laughs> Here I am. You know. Mm -hmm. And then maybe like throughout the day, I just feel like I'm putting on things like mud mm -hmm, is sticking mm -hmm, to me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe from culture, from mm -hmm. people who I'm around, from my own psyche, from like myself telling, saying things, and that it's like a constant, and maybe it's not like a switch where it's like I'm authentic or I'm not. Mm -hmm. My journey maybe is more of like remembering to like shake that off, wipe that off, you know, like yes. wash off that yes. that mud um, and, then, and then being able to more fully continue to realize who mm -hmm. I am yeah. authentically. No, totally. I, I, I totally agree with that. I think um, one of the things when I when I do any sort of meditation or ritual or something at night right before I go to bed, I find that I'm actually kind of hearkening back to what, the way I felt when I got out of bed in the morning. You know? so it's, it's, and you're right. It's like all of the things we do, and it's, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's what you, it's a thing, right? You just have to do it to get through the day and make sure that you take care of your responsibilities, etc. But maybe what I can do as I go through all of that is as I'm doing that, recognize the sacred in doing that, you mm -hmm. know? So right now I'm grading and I'm, you know, you find the sacred <laughs> in those papers. <laughs> That's right. I'm writing and, uh... I try, and, I, and I try to, you know, I, I think about it. So here's the thing. So maybe this isn't the most sacred, but you know, if, if I, if, if kids weren't writing crappy papers, then they wouldn't, if they were writing perfect papers, they wouldn't need me and I'd be, I wouldn't have a job and I'd be homeless and living <laughs> under a bridge, right? So, so in a way, the students are blessing me by needing my comments, right? So, so in a way, we're kind of, we're, it's like church. <laughs> it, this is where I'm going to put it. It's like, look, Marianne Williamson used to say this, it's like church. You know, they give me their their things, and I bless it and give it back to them, and then they bless it and give it back to me. Now, their blessing could be like a rack of you know, <laughs> but it's still in a way it's a it's a blessing. And so, and that's if I can remember that throughout the day, or it points throughout the day. I have a reminder on my phone that says "Be still," like every mm -hmm. three three or four hours. If I can just kind of remember that, maybe it makes it easier at the end of the day to kind of remember how beautiful we are. <laughs> I wonder too if like all those little reminders throughout the day, maybe it's easier to do that mm -hmm. than to like, okay, so from now on, I'm authentic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, right. <laughs> like that's a pretty heavy lift. But yeah, maybe it is. if yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. these little reminders throughout yeah, the day. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm being authentic. Do you mind? Hey, hey, yo, yo, I'm being authentic here. Okay. Just let Back me up. Know. This is an authentic <laughs> zone. Like, could we have like caution tape that says like, right. like caution, authenticity. <laughs> You're wandering into an authentic <laughs> woman's space. Okay. Right. Be prepared. Be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. So I don't want to peg an authentic moment for you, <laughs> but I do. I have, I have these memories of you. One of the things that I think about when I think of you are these moments whenever I see you and you're drumming and your eyes are closed and you're mm -hmm. just like grooving. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that is you being authentic, but I just wanted to let you know, like when you're doing that, you are you shine in this way that is Yay. so beautiful. Thank you. So I think, thank you for, for saying that. I, I so appreciate hearing that because I, I do feel as if when I am drumming or dancing or, you know, chanting or whatever, um, I'm not caring. We were just talking about all those accoutrements that you know mm -hmm. we just built up over ourselves over the course of the day. Like I dropped all of that, and that's kind of like my core. And mm -hmm. you know, there might be other facets of me and stuff, but whatever they are, they kind of all come from that same spot. And it's such a I, I, I don't know if I can live in that all, all you know twenty four <laughs> twenty four seven. But I'd like to give it a. I'd like to see if I can spend a weekend and just like drum and <laughs> <laughs> like like see how long I can maintain that or whatever probably not a long time but but yeah it's a it's an amazing um, it's an amazing 
time, but I don't think I'm actually making a choice at that point to be authentic. I'm just, it's just doing the stuff that makes my soul sing. Um, and, and I get a sense of, well, I get a sense of that when you do a lot of things, but I, I, and, and, and I know you've been focusing a lot on acro, but I just remember when you were uh, do, competing a lot and doing uh, West Coast Swing. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's, it's, when I see you doing that, that's um, more, well, you tell me what that's, well, let me tell you what I was thinking. <laughs> and then you can say, no, that's totally not what was going on. You can on. tell me but, about it. Tell me, tell me when you see me shining authentically and beautifully. <laughs> but what I see is not only you shining and you being beautiful as you're doing as you're dancing but you're there's a synergy between you and whoever you're dancing with and so you're shining and you're allowing them to shine and 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 that to me is kind of like the blessing of what we are you know but but let me allow you to tell me what you're thinking about in those, in those I, I think moments. you're highlighting something that's really tr true at least for me which is there's like a shortcut to authenticity mm -hmm, it's not a shortcut mm -hmm. but like uh, like a direct line to mm -hmm, authenticity. Mm -hmm. Shortcut has like a negative connotation. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. there's a direct line to my authenticity, and that's through movement. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> the look on your face, like duh. The, <laughs> the bottom, whatever it opens right. again. Yes. Please God. Yeah. That's my favorite club. But yeah. I, I do feel most authentic, and it's so funny. Like I feel sometimes I feel the most authentic, the most in tune with myself. Mm -hmm. Direct line to the sacred. Mm -hmm whenever I'm out at a club dancing. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And just fun fact for li anyone listening, oftentimes whenever we go out, like I don't drink or anything mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. because I'm, I am so high mm -hmm. on authenticity. And one of my one of my favorite moments where I, I actually started to cry, mm -hmm. which I have cried out at the club many mm -hmm. times. <laughs> some, of, uh, some, yeah, yeah. some of the other witches from yeah. our group uh, have gone with me. Uh, <laughs> I'm so moved. <laughs> yes, including you. Yeah, yes, <laughs> including yes, you. Yeah. But I mean, I'll, I'm moved to tears. Like mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. I, whenever I'm, yes, mm -hmm. moved. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> oh, I was moved to tears. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it happens when I'm out at the club. Mm -hmm. When, especially when I'm competitive dancing. Mm -hmm. Side note: I think that's because of like the energy, and I'm an energy witch. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's mm -hmm. hundreds of people watching, it's oh, like, yes, it's like, just like steroids on mm -hmm. like yeah, my yeah, connection to yeah. the sacred. Um, yeah, but I uh, there's this there's this uh, drug and alcohol free rave that happens mm -hmm. uh, like early mornings that mm -hmm. I've been to with yeah. my partner a number of times, and sometimes we'll be getting ready. It's like four a.m. you mm -hmm. know, and I'm like putting glitter on my face <laughs> and these like sticky jewels all over mm -hmm. my hands and mm -hmm. my collarbone, mm -hmm. and I'm wearing like a tutu, you know. <laughs> and I had this moment where I looked at myself. I'm thirty seven, <laughs> um, by the way. So I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like. This is who you're meant to be, mm -hmm. Leilani. Mm -hmm. I'm like looking at myself, Leilani. Mm -hmm. Like this is you. Like yeah. I'm showing. Like this is me showing up. Like, mm -hmm. and I was moved to cry, and I mm -hmm. thought, like, wow. Yeah. And yeah. it's not about the glitter. It's not about the stickies. Although I do love glitter. Yeah, well, I do good. love stickies. Yes. And yes. I do love tutus. <laughs> and and you look great in them. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. But it was like an outward expression of how I feel inward, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is like shining and movement and mm -hmm. bright and mm -hmm. uh, and depth. You mm -hmm. know, light and darkness, and mm -hmm. that was all embodied in that moment yeah it's to me a lot of that when I when I look at you it's like just the visual aspect of the energetic movement like mm -hmm. there, there's all this energy that's doing stuff and then you also get like like you know pink glitter or you know like <laughs> gold or you know yes <laughs> so you know, like the cabochons or whatever around the around the collarbones or something mm -hmm. like that yeah yeah so which I think is pretty amazing Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out though, shout out to everyone who struggles matching mm -hmm. their outsides to their insides. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that has, I imagine, even in my small mm -hmm. moment of that, like seeing my outsides match my insides with, with glitter and rhinestones, yeah. I can't imagine yeah. people who really struggle. Yeah, Oof. totally, totally. Yes, exactly. I um, And I actually posted, I don't know if you saw this a while back on, it was, uh, on, my, on my blog post about this idea of movement and just kind of allowing yourself to just kind of feel what like you know the the beat coming up through your feet and your heartbeat pulsing and you know like the, the muscles moving oh my gosh and it's just it's it's primal 
And so it takes us back to where we were, but it's also couched in, you know, 20, 20, 21, 20, 20, 20, where, what are we in? 20, 2020. 20. I, I, I'm, like totally, you... <laughs> I'm totally forgetting about 2020. We, we're, Many we... people want to forget about 2020. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so in the 21st century, let's just, there we go. <laughs> just say that. Yeah. And so, um, and, and it's amazing when you see, when I get a chance to see somebody else who does that. And so. Um, I feel so blessed to dance with you. We've got to go dancing again soon. I know. Or I dance w- here. I want, yes. Mm-hmm. I wonder, though, if that may be what pulled me to you. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, there are many things that mm-hmm. pulled me mm-hmm. to you, but that, that center core of you showing up as you, mm-hmm. you know, when you, that, mm-hmm. when you close your eyes and you're drumming and when you're swaying back and mm-hmm. forth, um, like I, I, I can remember 15 years ago mm-hmm. when I mm-hmm. first the first few times I saw you mm-hmm. in a ritual space and I was just like that who is that we're sisters yeah. <laughs> oh yeah no I know I know you know no it's true I I, I remember I can't remember if the, and you I, I don't know if we can pin this down but if we were at somebody's house or something and I was drumming and you were dancing like kind of behind me I couldn't even tell you were, but I could feel your energy and I don't even know if you were act like really dancing uh, with a lot of movement or just kind of you know dancing in, in a small spot a small space but I just remember that and, and um, I don't know I, I guess I knew your name at that time I don't remember but I just remember that feeling of the energy even though I couldn't see it mm. you know so so yeah yeah so so one of the things that I thought was really fascinating as we were thinking about the the idea for this uh, for this podcast episode is you're telling me um, you're mentioning this phrase called authenticity sobriety. So I hope you kind of tell us a little bit more about that. So this phrase came for me because I, whenever I was going through all these changes in my life uh, as a thirty-something, uh, and I and I um, left my my then husband and made all these changes with who I was with and who I hung around and the way I spent my energy, I kept, people would ask me and I would try to say like, what, how do I, how do I, how do I label this? Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I, and I didn't like using the word like, oh, when I got divorced, because that that was like one aspect of Mm -hmm. them, you know, Mm -hmm. and it wasn't that. And so then I was like, okay, so like reboot. Okay, like, well, that I'm not a computer, you know. So uh, I didn't know what to call it, and I'd been searching for it. And I have a friend in the Al Anon community that I'm really close to, and she speaks a lot about sobriety. And I noticed that that the things that she said, I just think that that her community, that community, um, like the AA community, the Al Anon community, has really nailed mm-hmm. this idea that that living authentically because what is when we think about traditional sobriety like Mm -hmm. with alcohol or drugs um like what is that really well that's Mm -hmm. a call to live authentically stop numbing out yeah so whoa Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah they're taking so instead of it just being like one aspect of your life they're talking about your whole life and all the changes because maybe you're starting with that one small thing. Yeah, and I don't want to speak for them, obviously, because mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not yeah. I'm not a member um, of that mm-hmm. of that community. But my friend who who mm-hmm. shares with me a lot, really vulnerably about mm-hmm. her experiences, we really had some interesting conversations about that. About mm-hmm. it is about showing up authentically, right, uh, and not numbing out through drugs or alcohol. And to me, that's what that's what authenticity is. So I was reading uh, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Mm-hmm. I'm still reading it. Um, and she talked about sobriety and she was actually talking about racism sobriety mm-hmm, as like mm-hmm, a way of mm-hmm. waking up and and i when i saw her write about that i was like okay okay so other people are looking for for words for this so then i was like what about authenticity sobriety yeah, and that yeah. and that idea that it's a constant you know like a, someone who is an alcoholic doesn't wake up every day and they're good like they recommit yes. to it yes. and it isn't and that reminds me of what we said earlier in our conversation about the constant putting on and taking off of mm-hmm. what is put on us by ourselves and others and and it, to me i'm wondering is that what is that what authenticity is yeah yeah i mean well, that whole idea of it's all just every mm, I'm, I'm kind of choking up every minute you're making a choice mm-hmm. right like you're choosing um, like uh, you're choosing to be sober, you're choosing to not, you know, put yourself in a position, but you're all, you're choosing to be authentic, and you're choosing to not put yourself into positions where you where you're tempted to not be, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you explained this to me before, and 
<laughs> it wasn't even, I didn't, I didn't get no, it. you did not have this reaction to it when I explained it to you before. <laughs> no, no, I was like, oh yeah, that's great. But oh my gosh, it's like my head exploded. Um, that's amazing. And I love that phrase. And, yeah. I, and I think yeah. too, one of the things that really draws me to this parallel with our siblings in this in the sobriety community mm-hmm. is that there's that, that we all we mess up mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. we are fallible mm-hmm. and yes. you know um, people slip and people fall backwards and and um, and that it's not game over mm-hmm. when that happens but that it's it's like pick ourselves up recommit make another choice make yeah. another make another mm-hmm. choice mm-hmm. and then move forward with mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. authenticity commitment Wow, that's a, that. That is actually pretty profound. I've just learned something. I mean, that's I, I, you know, it's it's um, my head literally exploded. But um, and and it 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 takes a lot of judgment out of your out of the journey. So mm-hmm. to so I mean, because there's implicit judgment in the journey. You're starting at one place and you're going to some some other place that's better than the place that you are. So then, what does that say about where you are right now? But but by just that's that idea. Okay, I'm I'm going to make a choice. Now I'm going to make another choice. Now I'm going to make another choice. Wow. Now I'm not going to make that choice again. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, <laughs> okay, no, make, no, that, no. make that choice. Check X X. Don't don't do it. <laughs> Moving yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I think that's actually really beautiful, and um, I hope it's not considered appropriating their their stuff. But I, I mean, sobriety is a word, right? Right. So. I, I did check in with my friend who is mm-hmm. a part of Al Anon, mm-hmm. and I, I I asked her like, do you mm-hmm. feel like this is appropriating? And mm-hmm. she said she felt like now obviously she doesn't speak for all of yeah, yeah. Al Anon mm-hmm. or anything mm-hmm. like that, but she said she felt like the more energy that we could have behind mm-hmm. the sobriety, mm-hmm. which is a commitment to authenticity, mm-hmm. the better. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping. That at least for me, my mm-hmm. choosing is is that to look back at those choices I made. Yeah. Um, like my major sobriety moment was in is in twenty fifteen whenever mm-hmm. I woke up, not literally, but mm-hmm. I woke up in my life and said like I have to make some changes. This is not who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And and it was pretty rough, but I think I mean, but it was good. But mm-hmm. I think framing it in this so the term of authenticity sobriety yeah. helps. I think helps me understand it better and maybe helps other people mm-hmm. around me uh, who are wondering and checking in about mm-hmm. what was going on with me yeah, in that yeah, moment yeah. whenever I was like, I, I like, like lit a match and blew up my world yeah. and my life. Mm-hmm. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about Glennon Doyle? And her... I mean, you, you said, isn't this the book that you're reading? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, her yeah. Unta- uh, the book is Untamed. Yeah, yeah. Um, but her concept around this was around racial sobriety. Okay. And, okay. and it was about the continual uh, waking up. Gotcha. Um, okay. The choosing yeah. to, the continual choice to wake up to this and mm-hmm. recommit to mm-hmm. seeing the world through, through the, for the, through that authentic, yeah. authentic lens. Yeah. 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 I, I, what I find so amazing is that how, um, as we're becoming more and more sensitive to various societal issues, mm-hmm. um, underlying them all seems to be something maybe not exactly but seems to be something very similar to to being authentic and to allowing other people to be authentic right um and that's something that it just occurred to me but that's something that i need to give some more thought to and think about but to yeah. me that echoes what you said earlier about this idea of uh like that moment when you're drumming mm-hmm. and you're swaying back and forth and mm-hmm. you're you're embodying who you really are Mm -hmm. how that's not all of who you are but that might be like at the Mm -hmm. core of who Mm -hmm. you are yeah yeah. and so i'm wondering if this authenticity uh, this concept of authenticity being a part of like our center like our touch point our 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 touch point to who we are and i think anytime there's injustice Mm -hmm. or anytime uh like what we're talking about like racial sobriety Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. lennon doyle did Mm -hmm. that that there could be uh, an infringement on that authenticity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're not allow like we're not allowing space for these people to show up in an authentic way. Mm-hmm. However, that is whether mm-hmm. it be alcoholics or mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. Um, like that 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 we're infringing on that that right to be mm-hmm. authentic. Yeah, yeah, um, and 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 in many ways, you know, in, in terms of institutionalized systems that um, don't allow for authentic expression that by mm, what's the, by um, by not saying anything that you know we're actually kind of maintaining that system and, and so that's something to think about I mean not not a, a solution that we will be making 
Well, we can't solve the world in, a, no, in one like, podcast like, episode. I'm, you know, like, duh. Join but. us next episode where we'll be solving all problems in the world. <laughs> Yeah, no. With our witchy wit. <laughs> With our witchy wit. Exactly. No, probably not. But, I mean, it, it, I, it just makes, I'm so glad that we're having this conversation because it just makes me think. And, and you know, we might have had this conversation and might have made me think before, but, you know, this is, I mean, this is, we're being raw. Candid. And, <laughs> and vulnerable. And vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> and so, this is kind of, it's just evolving as this conversation's going and, you know, kind of, kind of like, you know, kicking off the script. Um, overturning so, the apple cart. Overturning the apple cart. Now we're gonna have to we're gonna have to say that at least once a week, just to make sure that we keep it in our vocabulary. Um, thank you, thank you so much. So one of the things that um, I'd love for us to be able to do is just explore different ways of thinking about whatever our topic was. And, and so I have a poem by Mary Oliver. Um, it's, it's, it's actually published, uh, she, she actually published it herself, but I'm reading it from a fabulous collection of uh, prayers, poems, and invocations from around the world called Earth Prayers. That's edited by Elizabeth Roberts and Elias Amadon. And this is the poem. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Thank you so much for reading that. Maybe like the geese called in that poem, like maybe this episode can be a call to anyone who's listening and a call, I know it feels like a call to me yeah, to me show too. up as more authentic. So thank you for sharing this space with me and thank you. talking about authenticity. Thank, thank you, you all for sharing this space with us. See you next, see you in two weeks. In two weeks. In two weeks. We hope you've enjoyed the magic that has unfolded here at Witchy Wit. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Witchy Wit Podcast. Email us at witchywit123 at gmail.com. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Get exclusive content and support us on Patreon. Stay, Stay witchy, y'all! y'all.